Well, I don't want to be too dramatic by sending you this from my hospital bed, but I just wanted to let you know I'm, I'm still around and still alive, not exactly kicking with a very troublesome ulcer in my right leg. Probably be here for another four or five days, I would expect. But I just wanted to take this opportunity in our Sunday Mass to say a very sincere thank you to all the wonderful people who have been so kind in sending good wishes and prayers. Uh, for my uh, recovery, which is heading in that direction, but it's got a while to go yet. Um, a special thanks to Father Paddy Moroni, who stepped in with the Masses this week, and uh, probably next week as well. And also, of course, to Peter and uh, uh, all the crew, Abby and, and uh, uh, Felicia, and everyone who's been associated with presenting the, the daily Mass, uh, Some sometimes from last year, sometimes from this year. And the, we might take particular note of the absolutely superb little liturgy of the word that was presented last Monday uh, by uh, Peter and uh, Abby, I think it was. But just terrific effort on everybody's part. So, look, just today, I wanted to let you know I'm <laughs> still alive and kicking to all you wonderful people of St Simon's Parish, including St Simon's Virtual Parish, and uh, miss you all. And uh, it does get a bit, uh, the staff here are absolutely marvellous at Mulgrave Private, but uh, do miss you guys and hope that uh, I'll be able to be back there very soon. God bless and thank you all. Welcome to St. Simon's Parish on the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Gospel highlights the acceptance of personal responsibility. We cannot spend all our lives blaming others for what has happened to us. At a certain stage, we must accept responsibility for our own lives, our actions and choices. Sometimes we need to admit that we have done wrong, apologize for our mistakes and ask God to help us improve in the future. Change is always possible. If we have the desire, God will guide us in the right path. Please stand to welcome our celebrant Father Kevin as we sing our opening hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to you all as we come together, one or two of us here in the church, but lots of you, hopefully, out there in Cyberland, watching this wherever you are, through the internet. And it's the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Special welcome, of course, for those who are not only just watching on the net, but those who are part of this on radio on 89.9 The Light, which is the effective title. I'm getting used to that now. 89.9 on the FM band, that is, of course. And we've had a long 
and very valuable relationship with the station that brings a lot of happiness and a lot of purpose and positive approach to life and faith through radio to lots of people in Melbourne and beyond. One other thing to mention at the beginning of Mass though will be that we're trying to connect with the people who are connecting with us and we'd love to put you on an emailing list for emails that we send out from the parish which might be of help and give you a bit of a lift now and again. So if we don't have your email address we promise we won't bombard you, but if you'd like to have that, just send us an email at office at stsimonsparish.com.au and we'll put you on a list of a weekly email that we send out to all parishioners and, well, you're part of our parish and we're pleased to have you. This is now to ask the Lord's help and strength and guidance in our Mass today and we ask for forgiveness for our sins. Lord, you were sent to heal a broken world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you show your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow your grace upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. In the first reading, the Lord bestows his spirit on the 70 elders. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud. He spoke with Moses, but took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. When the spirit came on them, they prophesied, but not again. Two men had stayed back in the camp. One was called Eldad and the other Medad. The Spirit came down on them. Though they had not gone to the tent, their names were enrolled among the rest. These began to prophesy in the camp. The young man ran to tell this to Moses. Look, he said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Then, said Joshua, the son of Nun, who had served Moses from his youth, My Lord Moses, stop them. Moses answered him, Are you jealous on my account? If only the whole people of the Lord were prophets, and the Lord gave his spirit to them all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response today, the precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. So in them your servant finds instruction. Great reward is in their keeping. But who can detect all his errors? 
from hidden faults acquit me. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. From presumption restrain your servant, and let it not rule me. Then shall I be blameless, clean from grave sin. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. In the second reading, St. James chastises the rich. The second reading is from the letter of St. James. An answer for the rich. Start crying. Weep for the miseries that are coming to you. Your wealth is all rotting. Your clothes are all eaten up by moths. All your gold and your silver are corroding away and the same corrosion will be your own sentence and eat into your body. It was a burning fire that you stored up as your treasure for the last days. Labourers mowed your fields and you cheated them. Listen to the wages that you kept back, calling out. Realise that the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. On earth you have had a life of comfort and luxury, in the time of slaughter, you went on eating to your heart's content. It was you who condemned the innocent and killed them. They offered you no resistance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel acclamation today. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Make us holy in the truth. Alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He went and said to the first, My boy, you go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not go. But afterwards he thought better of it and went. The man then went and did the same thing to the second son who answered, Certainly, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the father's will? The first, they said. Jesus said to them, I tell you solemnly, tax collectors and prostitutes are making their way into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you, a pattern of true righteousness, but you did not believe him, yet the tax collectors and prostitutes did. Even after seeing that, you refused to think better of it and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, even through, well, maybe because of radio and internet, I can't see you, but I know you're there. But hands up if you've ever sent an email and later on thought, why did I do that? I think there's a lot of hands up out there somewhere or other. We've all gone down the track where we've made a decision. Maybe we were upset. Maybe we didn't look at the address and realise we've sent the email off to the wrong, oh my goodness, off to the wrong person. And we end up trying to unravel things afterwards and that's nearly as bad as trying to extricate glasses from masks and so on. The instant nature of the way in which we live these days is that emails together with text messages and so on and let alone I believe I've never got into Twitter at all but I imagine what it would be much the same not to mention things that are posted on Facebook for goodness sake how often do we see these things go out and they're in the news the next morning and everything falls apart for the person concerned because the classical phrase of course it seemed like a good idea at the time if we stop for a moment 
before we're pressing the send button, be it on the phone or the computer or whatever, we may do something which is very much at the heart of the gospel today and of Jesus' consistent messages, and that is to think twice, to say, do I really want to do this? Am I doing this the right way? Is this the person even checking the address at the top of the page or the phone? Am I sending it to the right person? The little gospel I've just read begins with the phrase, the little sentence, a man had two sons. Now, almost certainly people think not of the gospel I've just read. They think of the prodigal son. A man had two sons. And he said, etc. And we know there's the one who goes off, gets his inheritance and goes off and spends it and ends up in all sorts of trouble. And the key line to the story is he came to his senses. He thought about the situation in which he was caught up in and thought, I've got to fix this. Similarly, in the gospel today, man had two sons and one said no I'm not going and afterwards Jesus tells us he thought better of it in other words he went back and said have I messed up have I insulted my father have I been selfish have I gone against what he really wants I can fix it I should fix it I will fix it. And so he fixed it. But he had to think twice about what he was doing. In this headlong rush of decision making that we often go about, we can all mess things up on any number of different levels. It can happen between individuals, it can happen in workplace situations, it can happen, dare I say, in governments where the point is we should think twice. Celine Dion had a song some years ago which was titled Think Twice and fear not, don't reach for the volume control, I am not going to sing it, but the central lyrics, it's a love song, but it's about a relationship that's falling apart and, and one says to the other, look, things aren't good but we can fix them, we value each other more than we think. Don't say what you're about to say, look back before you leave my life. Be sure before you close that door, before you roll those dice, baby, think twice. That's a great song, it's a very beautiful song actually melodically and she's a marvellous singer. But it's also good advice to think twice because we can be so rushed and we can also be wrong. And there's something there within us that says we know we're wrong. And that's where the second part of the gospel today is important because Jesus talks about the Pharisees and the tax collectors and prostitutes, the top end of town and the bottom end of town. And he really serves it up to the Pharisees and says, just because you're the leaders, just because you've got the power, that doesn't mean you've got it right. There are other people who have got it a lot more correct than you have. And you might look down your nose at them, you might scorn them, you may have no respect for them, but guess what? They're way in front of you. Some years ago, I've told this story a few times, not for a while, I don't think, but I came across a book in a bookshop that was closing down. And it was a very big bookstore chain. It was Borders, actually. And it was a book written by an American business guru by the name of Jim Collins. And it was called How the Mighty Fall. And it was a study of how big businesses, big corporations, successful organisations had come crushing down into oblivion. And he said the first 
step of decline is hubris, arrogance. We've got it made. We know what we're doing. We're not changing a thing. We've got our business plan set and we're going to stick to it because we know everything. And it goes down to five different stages of decline, of hubris and denial and grasping for salvation and so on, till eventually the whole thing falls apart. I was fascinated, of course, as I told you, I bought it in Borders. Borders as a bookstore were huge all over the world. I wondered at the time whether those steps of decline were detected or could have been detected in the decline of that business. Probably could. Well, you and I are not in business except the business of life. But the whole idea of recognising that we haven't got it made, that sometimes we get it wrong. And sometimes getting it wrong can hurt other people. I can remember watching the movie, oh, years ago, Gallipoli. And the feeling that I had as I saw reenacted the actuality of troops being sent over the top of the trenches by commanders who knew they would get about 10 metres before being cut down by enemy fire. And yet, because that was the order, they kept on sending them over. Sheer, utter, culpable stupidity because they wouldn't think twice and they say, look, I'm here, I can see what's going to happen. And while the chain of command and the orders and so on are all there, at the same time, this is sheer madness. And it was. And I can remember feeling that chill inside me, watching that scene, thinking, how could people possibly have done that? And while it was a movie, it wasn't fiction. It actually happened. And it happens in any number of different circumstances. It's not just years ago. It's not just in world wars of 100 years ago. It can happen at any time, in any circumstances. And we need to think twice. We need to give ourselves the space to look, to ask, to review, to think again, and then maybe, like the first son, doing something stupid, thinking twice, and then he gets it right. And as Jesus said, who gets the tick? Who did the Father's will? The fellow who maybe had made the wrong decision first, but thought better of it and fixed it up. Well, maybe you and I can think of some examples of that that happen around us. Maybe we can think of examples of that sort of thinking in our own personal life. Maybe someone we've hurt, someone we've damaged, and we could step back. Deep down we know we should step back and correct it and think twice because sometimes those second thoughts are the best thoughts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's now together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now come with confidence to the throne of grace and present our petitions to God, who is merciful and just. Lord, we bring the administrators, principals, professors, teachers, school secretaries, the support staff, 
and maintenance staff of our schools and universities before you. In their vocation as educators, they continue the teaching ministry of Christ. We pray for your blessings over their lives, their work, their livelihood and their families. Guide them with your wisdom. May they be empowered by your spirit to see the needs of their students and to inspire those under their care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring the parents, guardians and caregivers of our students before you. They are faced with unprecedented challenges. They have to make decisions that require your wisdom, understanding and insight. When they feel overwhelmed, be present in their lives. May they never feel alone or abandoned. Strengthen them so that they might be a source of strength, confidence and hope for their children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray on this Migrants and Refugees Sunday for all who have left their homelands, that they will summon us to affirm our common humanity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all participants in the upcoming Plenary Council, that they will have the freedom to listen faithfully and speak out boldly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died recently, especially Dan Daly and Ignatia de Costa. We also pray for Christine Navanelan, Jean Ashman, Harry Weinberg, Mrs. Joan Lamb, Margaret Dalton, Kathleen Todd, and all whose memory we keep sacred in our hearts. May God welcome them into the eternal kingdom to share the reward of their eternal service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these prayers and those deep within our hearts with confidence in the name of Christ Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you to receive us and please for the sacrifice we offer you. Humble contractors. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Merciful God, grant that our offering may find acceptance with you. Through this offering, may the wellspring of all blessing be laid open before us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering he cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, for with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other as best we can the sign of peace and friendship in Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Well, of course, at this point of the Mass for Holy Communion, it's a communion with the Lord and union with one another. And that's probably a bit more easily expressed when we're all together in a church as a group. But this little spiritual communion prayer does bring us together at this point of the Mass, knowing that at this time in which we seek communion with the Lord, we very much seek communion with one another. And... It's quite fascinating to think that so many people will be praying this prayer along with us who are part of this Mass from St. Simon's today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, may this heavenly mystery restore us in mind and in body. May we be heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I suppose the word of the year is probably COVID, but running a close second might be the word Zoom, with which most of us were totally unfamiliar until about the middle of March. The idea has come up that perhaps we could have mass presented within the context of Zoom, whereby you at home could be part of that, participating in a Mass with other people that you can see and hear and so on, get that sense of community. So if there's something you'd like to explore, we haven't got all the details worked out, but it's been done in other places and we can certainly do it from here. If you just email us to office at St Simon's Parish, it'll be on your screen, just expressing a bit of interest and we'll pursue it. Obligation free, etc., to express an interest just to see where we're heading. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.